Okay, next recipe. So this is sort of going back to what I said about you can do some of the prep ahead of time and if you've cooked your beans and froze them or if you've chopped some vegetables and froze them, you know, spend maybe it's a Sunday or maybe, you know, one day in that week when you're gonna do a little bit of prep that's gonna help you for another 12 meals, right? It, it, it seems like a lot of work up front, but it saves you a lot of time in the long run. Uh, so this is one that I'm gonna show you. This is something that I try to have in my freezer all the time because if I'm working all day and I'm going home and I'm, I'm cooking again, um, I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm already off and out of the gate started, ready to go. Um, so this is, um, in Spain and Italy, they call this sofrito. Uh, you may have heard it as mirepoix as well. That's the French term. This is sort of your base aromatic ingredients, your starters to soups, stews, sauces, um, any sort of braised dishes. Um, it's a great meal starter. Um, and what I do is make a big batch ahead of time, store it, and then it's a lot easier to get started uh, on your recipes. Uh, so, with a mirepoix, does anyone know what is in a mirepoix? Celery. Celery, celery carrot, carrot onion. onion. Celery, carrot, onion. Sometimes they call us the Holy Trinity uh, as well. Um, celery, carrot, onion. With sofito, so the Spanish or the Italians, or it doesn't matter where you are in the world, it's sort of that idea with a couple ingredients swapped in and swapped out. So this is sort of the version that I like, and this is the one that I, I usually prepare. So we have our onion, we have our carrot in here. These are big chunks as well. Um, instead of celery, I use fennel. So if you've ever, anyone's seen fennel before, so this is kind of half or quarter of it, the outside. Um, it has the texture of celery, but it has almost this anise sort of licorice flavor in a good way, not like a uh, black licorice, I hate black licorice, whatever. Uh, it's actually really tasty. This is what I use instead of celery. So essentially, we're, we're going to throw all these things into a food processor. We're going to make this nice base. Uh, the thing I add is garlic. Because I know I cook with a lot of garlic. I'm going to add it anyways. So I might as well add it now. Get it out of the way. So here is about maybe like tiny cloves, maybe like 10 cloves. But if I had more, I'd add more. Just you know, as much garlic as you want in there. This is a, a dried chili. Um, but it, it, this is an ancho chili. It's not spicy. This is actually a mild chili that has a really nice smoky flavor to it. Um, so this is an optional thing, uh, but if you like it even spicy, you can put a little bit of, of spice. But this is just, it gives you a lot of rich flavor. Uh, and I've seen these, they're starting to bring different types of dried chilies in grocery stores now. Um, and they're not all spicy. I think a lot of people that don't like spicy food automatically write off chilies. There's a lot of chilies that you can add to stews, to soups, that add a lot of flavor, and, um, and you don't get the spice. So I'm just tearing this up, just so it blends a little bit easier. So chili and the garlic. Give it a nice pulse, just until it breaks up a little bit. Then we're gonna add our onions. I'm not going to add all of this because I realize I cut up maybe way too much for this food process here, but fennel, or carrots, the stems of the parsley, which most people throw out. You don't use the stems, you just use the tops. The stems are tastier and sweeter than the leaves, believe it or not, but because they're very fibrous and chewy, yeah, we don't, we don't usually cook with it. They're fantastic in something like this and your stalks, really, really good. Put pieces of fennel. Okay. This is about a quarter, this is about a quarter. Yeah, so on there I have one fennel bulb. Yeah, you can use the whole thing. Now, depending on if you have a food processor to begin with, right, and then depending on the size, you can adjust or do it in stages. So I would follow that measurement and probably do this twice, fill it up twice, and then, because you don't want to overpack it. So. And then just pulse. That's it. 
So you have this beautiful, colorful, chopped up, looks like kind of like a mess, mm -hmm. but it is full of flavor. And this is sort of your starter. This is like your, your flavor cube uh, for all of your, your recipes. So now this, what I do is put it in a Ziploc bag, flatten it, throw it in the freezer. I'll show you in a second. Um, and it freezes. And then you just take off what you need when you're making a recipe and you add it to your dish. And or... And you don't have to defrost them. No. No, once it's in the pan, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll melt down. Or what you can do is put it in little muffin tins. So I did it two ways. I cover it with a little bit of oil. Oh, I made a lot. So there's my sofrito, right? Flatten in a Ziploc bag, and it's ready to go. And then if I want a piece, you just break off a little chunk, or you just you know smash it, break off a chunk, and then it goes in there. Or if you don't want to make it as big, you can put in these little muffin tins, like this, right? And I, what I do is I covered it with some some olive oil, and this should be able to pop right out. Right, so I have my olive oil, my sofrito mix. Oh, so it's frozen too. Frozen. Okay. So I'm ready to go. If I want to start my recipe, my soup, put it in. That saves you at least 20, 30 minutes, depending on your knife skills mm -hmm. and chopping, right? Let the machine do the work for you. We're trying to make this more accessible, not harder, right? Um, so that's, that's the flavor. That's the, that's the sofrito. And you can keep it as basic as you want. You can keep it just like we talked about with the mirepoix, onion, celery, Carrot, mm -hmm. and just keep it as simple as that, or add whatever flavors you like. Okay. So now, now for our recipe. That was that was uh, part one, and now this is part two. So we're gonna make uh, hunter's chicken. Has anyone heard of that before? Hunter's chicken. So hunter's chicken, uh, sort of this this winter's hearty stew, um, it, it's also called chicken cacciatore if you're thinking of the Italian version or uh, chasseur which is like the French version. Uh, the idea is when the man or woman at the time will go hunting, um, this is that hearty dish that would you know sort of uh, sustain you either before the hunt or maybe after the hunt. So it's, it's supposed to be nice and hearty and you can add whatever you want to it. So I chose a few seasonal ingredients. Uh, made it pretty simple, but it all starts off with this sofrito. So I have a pot or a pan or soup pot. What I would suggest is pick something that can go into the oven pretty easily. And I'm going to add about a cup or so. Half a cup there, yeah. You can add half a cup. This, this pot is maybe a little bit bigger. So like about, it's about that much. You just want to cover the, the base of the pan and cook it out. And you're going to start to smell the garlic. You're going to smell a little bit of the carrots, a little bit of the onion. This is the base for your recipe. This is where a lot of the flavor, most of the flavor comes from. So this goes in here. So this you would maybe saute maybe for three minutes if it's defrosted like this. If it's frozen, then just wait till it defrosts and it cooks down, it's, it's softened. So it might take you a few more minutes. All right, so for this dish, and we're using chicken thighs. These are boneless, skinless chicken thighs. <clears throat> These are like the easiest ones to get going instead of deboning, or you can cook it with a bone, it's just gonna take a little bit longer. Or you can keep it, if you don't wanna use chicken at all, use whatever you want. I mean, I've done this with chickpeas and kept it vegetarian and it's delicious, it's fantastic. So, whatever you want in there, but have the sofrito at the bottom. You add your chicken right on top. And this, it's gonna taste like you've been cooking, spending a lot of time in the kitchen, but it's, it's really, really simple. So just until you can sort of fill the pan. I have enough room, I'm gonna add it all in there. Don't overlap anything, just make sure it has even coverage on the sofrito there. 
beautiful. And then you can add whatever vegetables you want. Um, I love mushrooms, so that's, that's what I'm gonna have. You have no choice because I'm cooking today. So, but at home, you can add whatever you want. Uh, these are big chunks of mushrooms because it's actually gonna slow cook. So I'm gonna put a few chunks of mushrooms in here, right on top. This one, not a lot of people cook with. You may have grown up with it. Uh, prunes, yes, love cooked prunes. It's gonna blow you away. It's gonna change your entire eating experience. They're, they're fantastic. They're not what you thought of. I know, I know. I had the prune juice growing up. I know exactly what it was about. Cooked prunes, are, they take on a, 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 this beautiful flavor and they add this, this sort of molasses richness to your dish. Um, they're fantastic. So I'll just make sure there's no pits. You can cut them in half or if they're small enough, I just throw them in there. Yes. Carrot, celery root, oh, squash, anything, anything. Yeah, anything that's gonna take, because this is slow cooking, we're putting this in the, in the oven for about 90 minutes, slow, low heat. Any vegetable is pretty much gonna be cooked at the same temperature, so you can use anything. So prunes go in, and then um, this is something that's in season now, uh, which is a, where's my knife, there we go. This is a blood orange. Anyone use a blood orange before? Beautiful. Uh, we don't think of citrus in the winter time as being in season because we don't grow citrus and because it's cold here. But citrus is, is fresh in California and Florida right now. So if you should see more of different types. You'll see like the palmellos, you'll see the blood oranges, the caracara oranges, limes. Um, see if you can get them from, from California or, or, or Florida. They're fantastic right now. So as soon as I saw this, I said we had to use it. So I'm just cutting it up into quarters. This is going in just like this. Just like this. Yeah. We're not going to eat this after, but it's, what it's going to do is it's going to concentrate. It's going to create this beautiful sort of syrupy sauce flavor. And then at the end, we're going to squeeze it on top. Skin, skin too. Everything. Just like that. Right? I'm not doing too much work. I'm, I'm literally just taking ingredients and throwing it into the pot. I'm going to cover it with some parsley. And this is, again, just rough, like torn, not even finely chopped, not wasting any time. And then liquid. And the liquid is up to you. I've got stock. You can, I put white wine on there. You can put white wine, white, white wine if you want. It's, all the alcohol is going to cook off in the oven. I know, I know. It's getting rowdy over there in the corner. It's easy, all right. You know, stock. You can even go water. You can even go water. Uh, and I put, I think I put with a half a cup on there or three quarter cup. You want enough to kind of come up halfway on the chicken. You don't want to cover the chicken, otherwise it's going to be too soupy, too saucy. So just about halfway. I don't know if you can gauge that. Halfway up the chicken and halfway up. Halfway up the, uh, halfway up the chicken. Yeah, it's hard to tip it because then it, you won't get a good read. But that's it. Done. Lid goes on top, or foil, or have some foil here. And that's gonna go into the oven for 350 degrees for about 90 minutes. Nothing, nothing. I don't wanna work, this is easy. <laughs> Throw it in, forget about it, right? So this goes into the oven. 90 minutes. And we could all pretend that 90 minutes just passed by. Yeah, television. television. Okay. Okay, and after 90 minutes, we have, it looks darker on there, but we have this beautiful, beautiful dish. Everything is, so if we take two forks, to the chicken thighs right now, they just shred, they just shred apart. Like, beautiful. The mushrooms, the prunes, the prunes, you're gonna get excited about prunes. This is amazing. Just shred it apart, you have this beautiful sauce here, right? And the oranges, remember we, we put the oranges in there. So these blood oranges, are like 
just incredible now. So this you're going to add. And if you're serving it to people, you just put a wedge on their plate and you just drizzle the blood orange juice on top. Don't eat this part. Yeah. That will discard. But the sauce is amazing. Um, and then that, that's it. Done. You can serve this with a little bit of rice, maybe a little bit of couscous. Or this is probably how it was served, which is a nice piece of toasted... Like a bruschetta, yeah, on top, like that. And you just kind of put that in with everything. Very, very much a comfort food dish. I think very much a dish for this time of the year, right? Um, so that's it, that's our hunter stew. Chicken with the sofrito. Yeah.